All right, back again with some more magnetization fun. Uh, this one says, we have a long cylinder of radius big R carries a magnetization big M equal KS squared in the phi hat direction where K is a constant and S is the distance from the axis. And phi hat is the usual as muthal unit vector as shown in the diagram. What we want is to find the magnetic field due to M for points inside and outside the cylinder. Okay, pretty similar to the last question, except now our magnetization is different and non-uniform. All right, let's draw it out. We got a cylinder, x, y, z. R is a distance from the uh, z-axis. We have s, some point in space. Uh, phi being the azimuthal angle. Good to go there. Let's uh, move on. You may recall from the last question, the bound currents, both surface and volume, being m cross n, or the curl of m. Uh, good to go there. All right, so first, let's start with the bound volume current, which requires us to take the curl of M. If you go in the book, the covers will have the curl of written to you in spherical and cylindrical conversion, so we use that. Here, that is 1 over S, D by DS of S dotted with the um, S times the component vector or the component of phi hat, which is ks squared, excuse me. Simplify it through, we see that the derivative is 3ks squared. Uh, that can, one of the s's cancels with the one out front, and we're left with a volume bound current of 3ks z hat. For the surface current, however, that is just uh, phi hat cross s hat, which tells us that, again, in the cylindrical system, that goes to z hat. So that's ks squared z hat for the surface bound current. All right, moving forward, this tells us that the bound current flows up the cylinder and it results in the re and returns down the surface. Incidentally, the total current should be zero, but is it? Well, yes, because if we do the integrals, we see that they're equal but opposite. So the uh, volume over the dA and the surface over the dL lead to the same thing. So we're, we have a good check there. Uh, our physical intuition should be keeping in line. And I think we're ready to move forward. All right, so since these currents have cylindrical symmetry, we can apply uh, Ampere's law to find the field. So, okay, so going back, we have the closed integral B dot DL is equal to mu naught I enclosed. Uh, with the cylinder here, we have 2 pi S, the circle. Um, not a square like we would with planar symmetry um, or the surface area of a sphere. So we'll just move forward. And then we have uh, mu naught, but the I enclosed is the integral from 0 to S of the volume bound current, um, okay, since we are inside in this case. Um, so moving forward, uh, we just uh, integrate that through. We see that we have some cancellation of the factors of 2 pi. Um, and then we see that B is consequentially, again, mu naught ks squared phi hat, uh, which is just equal to mu naught. M. I think we solidify that B is very much related to M via the factor of mu naught. All right, since there's no enclosed current outside the cylinder, I enclosed is zero, and therefore B outside is zero as well. Pretty straightforward after the fact, but pretty cool to see the bound currents give us what we want. 